Alrighty, old gatekeeper here. It's time to talk about some switches and relays. Let's get it! Oh, wait, we ain't got any cool intro music to play to try to make that look and seem cool, do we? <laughs> Sorry about that. a pretty good uh, mood today. Things are going pretty swell on my end out here. Anyway, let's carry on this side. Uh, this really isn't part of the five building blocks of an amplifier uh, uh, series. This is just an extra add-on addition because uh, I did talk about that I would talk a little bit more about relays and switches. I'm not going to get super deep because this is not really a super deep project. Switches, relays are switches. See, once you begin to look at a relay like a switch, things will become a lot more clear. So, looking at it in that perspective, let's talk about a switch. I know a lot of this is going to be a boring uh, subject for a lot of people. Your most simplest switch in the world is going to be a simple pole, a single pole. It is simple, though. <laughs> a single pole, single throw switch. We're talking about on, off, on, off. Not making a connection, making a connection. Kind of like a knife switch. The old school knife switches. Okay, single pole, single throw switch. Did I bring? Did I even bring a single pole, single pole switch over here? I don't know if I did, but I should have. Let's get one. Three left. Well, it's time to go to Walmart. All right. Uh, Here's your most simplest switch you'll ever find. A single pole, single throw. That means there's one pole and it's being thrown in one direction. Just like that. So you can't hook this switch up wrong. This is one of those type of switches that really cannot be hooked up wrong. We're going to take our trusty Fluke 77 here. Hook one to there. Give me a second there. I ain't got this, uh, ain't got nothing to hold the phone here. All right, so you can see that's on. And we flip it. Excuse me, they actually were touching. That's on. That's off. Sorry, the leads are on there so small the alligator clips are touching each other so you get the point simple on off all right to go to a deeper take that a little bit further here we have another single pole no it's not a single pole but a single throw this is a still a simple on off switch but count the leads. One, two, three, four. So what would this be right here? This would be, we'll cross that out and write four pole, single throw. If there was three, it'd be a three pole. If there's two, it'd be a two throw. If there's eight, it'd be an eight pole. If there's a hundred, it'd be a hundred throw pole. I ain't never seen one of them, but very simple, on off. This would be great right here for turning on and off four separate uh, circuits or for this one switch to carry a load, a, a larger load by using all the poles to turn on and off one circuit. All right, let's take it a little bit deeper. We've got the single pole, four pole, those are all being thrown one direction. Then you come to a switch like this right here. That direction, you got a center point, and you go that direction as well. This is what we like to call an on 
off on switch and since I'm on that give me one second where are you I know you're here or maybe you're not here I'm just hoping you are oh man that, that's where they would be in, I'm, I'm out of them that's where they would be, the double pole, double throw on-ohms, and I am out of it. So I'll just have to, instead of demonstrating, I'll just have to show you. All right. This thing is telling me that I only have three more minutes recording. That is not going to work. Before I even get any further, I'm going to go ahead and fix that right now. i tell you what, you upgrade your phone, Okay. You get a 128 giga, gigabyte SD card, external. You have a, what do I got an internal? No, I got a 128 internal and a 128 external. And you still fill it up. That's one thing I'm good about doing is filling up hard drives. Hard drives. Hard drives. <laughs> I'll be right back. Let me clear up some space real quick so we can continue. Or better yet, let me go ahead and cover this about this switch, and then because I've got about two minutes left, then we'll I'll free up some space. I know what's taking up the space. I got about a 20 gigabyte video I did the other day. All right, so this is an on all phone switch. Okay, all this means is is the center that would be considered off because the way you've got to look at these switches, this is just simply two switches in one. If I eliminate half of this, it is a single pole double throw, okay? Single pole double throw. That's the postman. Let me tell him something real quick. Hey, one of them packs is a little heavy. I just want to let you know. All right. Sorry about that, y'all. I got a package out there, it's about 62 pounds, and I don't know if that poor woman's going to be able to get it. I'm kind of worried. I'm kind of worried that she is going to be able to get it. It's raining out there, too. I'll tell you, Manny. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you a lot. I see that truck every day. Every day. Somebody is continuing to call me and call me and call me. Alright. So this particular switch is an on-off phone. Because you can sit there and stop it in the middle to where the center conductor here, which is called the common, all right, that's what I'm about to talk about here in a second. That is the common, all right? When it's like this right here, the common can be stopped, meaning it's not touching either lead. This is an on-off. It's an on-off on. Sorry about that. I've cleared up enough to have 49 more minutes, y'all. This is an on-off on switch, okay? Now let's pick this switch up and take a look at it again. This is an on off. And you can see right here on the back, if you can pull it up, uh, see it right here. We got off and on. Okay. That means this first leg right here is the pole that's being switched. That's called the common. Whatever lead that's actually being switched back and forth is always called your common. Okay. The other lead right here on this particular switch is called the normally open. Normally open means that's the lead that's not touching anything when it's in a resting position. The normally open. Okay. When you have a switch like this right here that's got an on off on. Right now both of these leads are normally open. You see what I'm saying? But if this switch 
was an own own, meaning that the common cannot be stopped. It's either left or right. Then if you switch it this way, one's a normal uh, 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 normally open, others are normally closed. Okay. A lot of that's going to be very helpful with relays, which we'll be getting to here in just a minute. So, with switches, single pole, single throw, single pole, double throw, double pole, double throw, three pole, double throw, they all can be so many different combinations of that way. Now, just like your simple breaker switch right here, all this is is a single pole, single throw, a on off switch, okay? They come in many forms and fashions. If you see a switch like this, you got one of these leads as a ground for the light. This is also a single pole, single throw switch. Just like you got this little key switch. See how there's just two leads? You've got a common and a normally open lead. Single pole, single throw switch. They come in so many different fashions. Now, and here's a little last one. This is just a high amperage switch for like a battery. Single pole, single throw. You got a common and you got a normally open lead. Relays. All relays are. Are switches it's just that simple there are switches that are turned on and off or thrown or actuated on and off with an electromagnetic force I meant to put this on here and I didn't kind of neat how you always think of stuff after you start this is the mechanical part of a relay right here okay now, let me get me a magnet right here real quick. Find me a, there we go. All right, I've got a battery right here, and I believe this battery's got a little bit of juice in it. We're about to see. All right, this is an old electromagnet from an old open frame relay. Uh, you see how it's picking that uh, nut up right there? Well, the battery's done about lost juice now. This battery's not real. You see what I'm saying? All right. That's what a relay does internally. All this is is one coil wrapped around thousands of times, and it causes this to be magnified by an electromagnet. And when it does that, it pulls the armature up to make contact. So this is the same part in this relay right here. It'll pull this armature down once it's magnified back up. And we do that with DC electricity or AC electricity. All right, we'll put that back over there. Did that fall? Yes, it did. I'll have to pick that up. But I like showing that to people that come by and like to just show them how the inside of relays work. All right. Here's a definition of a simple, simple single pole double throw. Okay. You can tell it's a single pole double throw because we've got three separate terminals here. So I have not yet, well, I can just look in here and tell. I hadn't yet seen the orientation of this relay, but you can see right here. This right here is the common. This lead right here, okay? This lead up here is the normally closed. That's the, that's the lead that the common is touching. This lead right here is the normally open. So when you apply whatever you're applying here, it's going to be touching this immediately. See, so we can show this right now. Let's see if I'm right. This is our continuity meter. One of your, one of your most 
best tools you'll use in working with amplifiers or electronics, period. So there you go. And then as soon as this relay is actuated, instead of this touching this lead, then this is going to be touching this lead. Okay? This is actually an AC coiled relay. This runs on 110 volts AC. This is a great relay, 40 amp relay that you could use to turn some switchers on. Quite a few switchers. Alright. Let's take a look at this relay. This is a 30 amp relay. You see a lot of us. It is hot as a four devils in a dang wool sock up in here. What the heck is going on? I'm going to turn both of them on. Hopefully it won't be too too loud. About hot as 18 devils in a wool sock with gonorrhea up in this cotton picker. You know what I'm talking about? Alright, hopefully that ain't get too loud. I don't know what's up with that one over there. This right here is a double pole. You can see my hands are getting shiny. It's getting warm up in here. This is a double pole, double throw switch. Okay? Let's keep. Let me see what time it is. So this is two single pole double throw switches put together. So I gotta keep up with the times. So I go pick up my son. Yeah, I ain't got much time left. This is a single pole double throw. This is two single pole double throw switches. Okay? This is a big 30 amp job. Love these, love these relays. Here's another one. I forgot to show this one earlier. This is just another example of a, a simple on-off, single pole, single throw switch, where you have a common and a normally open. Nice little breaker switch. These three relays are all identical. They're all double pole, double throw relays. Different amperages, different voltages, etc. Okay? We're going to talk about this orientation right here, which is the same as this orientation. Alright. Shadow. I'm sorry about these interruptions, y'all. Get out of here, Shadow. I'm doing a video. You know better, sir. That cat and jobber. All right, we're going to use this relay since it's a little bit bigger and it's going to be a little bit easier to see. Like I said, these are two switches in one. That's the way you need to look at it. This is an AC version, but this is, this is two switches in one. Two single pole double throw switches. Let's just forget about one side. So, if my memory serves me right, this lead and this lead are touching right now. That's because this is the common. This is the normally closed. But hey, what if you got this relay and you have no idea which is the common? Because this doesn't tell you which, the com which is the common. This doesn't tell you. This just tells you one of these two are common, but you don't know which one's common. Well, here's how you do it. You go ahead and power up this coil on this relay. I hope this battery's got enough juice. Man, this battery ain't got enough juice. I must have killed that thing. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's an AC relay. Alright, instead, yeah, I make stupid mistakes like that. We're going to go down to the smaller one. I was wanting to use that bigger one. I can go get me a 12 volt one, but I need to hurry up here. All right, we're going to go with the small one. So let's power up this coil. All right, you see that? The continuity went off. 
But how are we going to tell what's, which one's the common? We need to know which one just, just moved. We need to know which one just moved. So how can we tell that? We key it down like that. And we take, we could take this first lead and take it off and then touch this lead. And we don't have no continuity, so we'll move it back. We take this lead off and touch this lead. Now we have continuity. So now we know which one moved. The black wire moved. So now we know which one is common. And then you write that down for your future reference. So that's how you can tell which one is common. That's the main one you need to know. If you can learn which one is common, you'll know everything else. Okay? So now that we know the orientation of this, that this is the common, and it's touching this already, and when we actuate it by get, uh, giving this coil uh, 12 volts or so, that this is touching this. I see an alarms went off. Let me dismiss it and hope it don't stop my video. It didn't. So since we know that orientation, the same thing is happening on the left side. All right. I meant to put this down here too. All right. Well, that wasn't what I thought it was. I thought I had a bar already on here, but I don't. Forget that anyway. I'll just show you on here. Sorry, I know this video ain't turned out as clean as I wanted it to turn out. This is your schematic diagram for a double pole, double throw switch. And like I said, a relay is a switch. So it can apply to both. And you can easily see what's happening here in this diagram. This is actually a schematic symbol, if I remember correctly. Here's your common. It's touching this. It don't look like it's touching it, but it's touching this. So this is your normally closed lead. And this is your normally open, because it's open normally. This is how the relay sits when it does not have power on it. Same thing on this side. It's touching this. When this relay coil gets power, this is going to switch up to here. Now the common is touching this lead, the normally open lead. And then this one's touching this. Very simple stuff. Now, how we use these relays. Before we go to that, take a look at this big whomper. <laughs> I've got quite a few of these, and I have not used one of them yet. By the way, everybody, if you ever get these relays with the LEDs in the back of them, be very careful. Be very, very, very careful. I've had a lot of bad luck with these relays. I, do no, I no longer use them had a lot of issues with the armature right here that's on the actual common breaking off from the lead right here and moving so when you key up you lose receive and you got to key up again to get receive again i've tried to see if i could fix that myself somehow and i hadn't had any luck and what sucks is i bought i think 50 of these relays because they were so cheap and I didn't, I used about 10 to 15 of them before I figured out what was going on. And that's why I haven't used these yet. But this is a four pole double throw. All this is, is two of these put together. It's two of these sharing the same coil. This could be used for a lot of cool little different things, man. This could be used for, uh, let's see. This could be used, uh, we could use this side, for example, for the input, okay? We could use this whole side right here and double up and use this whole side right here for the output. And then we could use this side right here for bias. You see, there's, there's quite a few uh, ways you could use these, and you'll see these used a lot in motor malls and stuff like that, I've noticed, okay? But let's get back to this orientation, which is what we're mainly gonna be using in amplifiers. All right, 
we're going to have a, a bar right here. So we're going to have a bar solder here from here, as long as the amp does not have a preamp in it. And the reason why we put this bar right here is because of this. If we have a bar right here, that means this bottom section right here, which is this right here, which will be your common. Your common is already touching this. So if we put a bar here, now it's going to be touching this. And since it's touching that, it's touching the other common. So you have a flow through. The signal comes in right here, goes here, folds over, comes down right here, and then back out the amplifier. Your feed through. Your feed through, your flow through, whatever you want to call it, it just bypasses the amplifier section and flows through the relay. Okay? You'll see a lot of people since you've got a little bit you got a little inductance bump from the relay you have to re, uh, fix that with a little bit of capacitance to uh, get the swr out of there to get it back to around as close to 50 ohms as possible so this is the way that we're going to be using these relays in our amplifiers watch as closely astra <laughs> dumbasta all right we're crazy, man. If y'all if ever heard me and him together talking to each other, you'd think we some goddamn loons. <laughs> and I ain't talking about the Yates either. So uh, this comes on in from the radio this direction on this lead, okay? And when the relay is off, it's, going, it's already touching this lead because this right here is your normally closed. Flows this direction, comes back down to here. And out to the antenna all right we need to switch these from transmit to receive so we use a key in circuit to do this and i drew the key in circuit this way so you can see it and i did leave out a special part of it didn't i the uh the coupling capacitor <laughs> i left out one of the most important parts of it. Without this, it would not work. I'm just going to put it in there real quick like this. There we go. So, your input signal is coming in. This takes a small sample of that signal, couples it, goes to here, that relay, that, that, that diode shunts half of that AC signal to ground. So you have a pulsating DC signal at 27,000 micro, or whatever voltage you're on, mega cycle, and gives enough voltage for this general purpose transistor to conduct, to turn on. Here's another switch, which then gives this ground, allows it to flow through, given this relay a ground and since we have this hot uh, a switch I got a little symbol a little cheesy symbol I that thing thing's crooked as a cat jobber that thing's crooked man that thing right there is about crooked as well, I ain't gonna say that all right so it goes this way and we got our snubber diode we'll get into that later and then this right here gives a little bit of smoothing so this relay isn't chattering. And there is how we use our relays. So what would we do if we had, let's say, one of these? Did I put that out there with it? I think I should have done this. All of these relays are identical. All of them. They're all double pole, double throw relays. Let's say we wanted to have a little preamp. And we'll use this a lot of times for the preamp. Well, we would remove this bar, delete that bar, and then we'll move the bar over to this relay. Now, just looking at this particular relay, I can't remember the orientation of it, but look, it tells us right there. Would you look at that? Would you look at it? J just look at it. W would you just look at that? Take a look at it. Just look at it. If anybody can tell me where that comes from, what I just said, you will win a big thumbs up from me. 
tell me where does that come from? Some guy on YouTube, that's all I'm going to say. Some way famous guy to me on YouTube. Where does that come from? Just look at it. Would you look at it? Just look at that. Look at it. Would you have a look at it? Just look at it. <laughs> First person that tells me where that comes from, what YouTube channel that comes from, wins a big old thumbs up for me. All right, it's hard to see that in the camera. All right, so number eight is the normally open. Number four, number six is the normally closed. And number four is the common. So here's the common right here. There's the common right here. And where was the normally closed? Number six. All right, so the bar... You'd put the moving bar right here across these two leads right here. So basically it would just come up here and then this would lead from here and go onto the preamp circuit, come back from the preamp circuit, flow through, or if everything's off, it'll flow through this tuning uh, through this bypass bar on here and then out. I would really love to make this video a little bit longer, but this video is gonna be just a real simple video anyway. You can't real get really get super deep in the switches. Um I think I'm going to do another video and show a couple examples of KIN circuits or RF sensing circuits. You've got a lot of different ways to do that, man. Um, a lot of cool ways. There's a lot of neat ways than just using the simple uh, quadruple two A's and stuff like that, man. you got some uh, pretty cool ways of doing KIN circuits. And I've uh, got a lot of ideas to be doing in the future. So I hope this could help out anybody. This is more of a straight beginners for somebody who's just starting off. If I had if I had this video right here to help me when I began, I, I would have been very happy. So 73 to y'all. This is the old GK out here around the northeast end of Georgia saying God bless. This will probably be the last video for now. There's more to come. I know I got a little biasing video I want to shoot out. And everybody out there that's waiting on builds, keep on hanging in there with me because I'm about there. I'm about there. And everybody that did hang in there with me, God bless you. You've been a, an amazing blessing to me. Thank you for all y'all's support. Comment. Like. Let's help the algorithm. Gatekeeper's gone. Bye, 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 bye. Yeah.